pain pushes until the vision pulls is a fairly well-known quote by a man called Michael B. Beckwith, um, a very wise individual, very woke. And I've resonated deeply with that quote over the last few weeks as I've attempted to overcome quite a monster of a bad habit, for me at least, and that's eating junk food. Over the last two years, I've overcome two other bad habits, smoking weed every day for about four years, and nicotine which of course goes hand in hand with um, smoking the weed and although you might view eating junk food smoking weed and consuming nicotine as vastly different addictions when ranked in terms of like severity um, i found there are actually quite a few similarities when attempting to overcome these habits and i'd like to share them with you in this video the reason I'm sharing them is just because I've experienced a lot of struggle and a lot of frustration and just a lot of unknowns when overcoming these bad habits. And I know that in order to become fully aware of all of these things, you need two things. You need the information, like the intellect, and you need the experience. And if you're watching this, you probably have some level of experience and I'd like to provide some information to help you um, sort through and compartmentalize the experiences you've had and um, hopefully continue pushing forward. So this is still like a V1 model, so I'm welcome to feedback in the comments below. But I'd like to give you an overview as to how I see the sort of addiction cycle going. So first of all is to be pushed by pain. Once you're pushed by pain, you can then recognize the pain. Then you can specify a cause. You can remove the cause. You experience a bit of an afterglow, but then you have to face your demons and it's likely you'll attempt to escape and go back to the thing that was causing you pain in the first place. Only to then realize because you've experienced life without that you be, you begin a paradigm shift into a new state of awareness where you realize doing that thing that caused me the pain doesn't cause me relief anymore so you learn to process them and that's when you really step into the new paradigm when you realize i can no longer use this as an escape it's actually fueling the pain and eventually you process all of this you feel quite good and you reach a new balance and before you know it a new pain reveals itself of course and then you repeat so i appreciate that might not be crystal clear right now so let me give you an example as to how that might actually play out in the real world So I'm going to use the example of eating junk food just because it's super fresh in my mind. This is a bad habit I've been looking to, I've been actively trying to overcome for the past eight weeks and um, I'm still working on it now, I'm still working on it. So the first step, be pushed by pain. So I was just eating so much junk food every day, I just felt awful, I had no energy, like I wasn't enjoying my food and um, I'd literally just sit on the sofa eating it th and it held me back right the pain was I didn't have like the dopamine available because like I didn't have the dopamine available to do productive things easily because I was overstimulating myself with fatty foods with sugary foods and um, that caused me pain right because I wanted to be productive but it was hard to be productive. I just wanted to be a slough on the sofa. So that caused me pain. And um, then I specified the cause. I could clearly see like the highest thing that was causing me that pain at that particular time was eating the rubbish food. There's always gonna be loads of other variables that are affecting your emotional state, but you can't fight them all at once. So you have to pick the highest good that you can perceive of and you have to go with that first then remove the cause so for me i 
and rubbish at diets so i thought i'll just do the carnival diet because you can't eat rubbish food on the carnival diet you're only eating things from an animal um i know it's a bit controversial i won't dive into the research here um you can check some of my other videos if you want to learn more about it but all my nutrients um nutrient needs nutrient needs were met with the carnival diet so i did that and um then after i met after i cut out all the rubbish i was only eating animal products i experienced a bit of an afterglow like and i've experienced this with cigarettes with weed with drugs and with food like and the afterglow is caused by dopamine right so when you're in active addiction or some level of overstimulation whether it be social media food porn like anything your baseline levels of dopamine are first of all all over the place like in peaks and troughs but also like you, you, your, your, your baseline of what pleasure feels like is higher although you're most likely riding the rut most of the time which is why you feel rough when you do engage in the stimulation your peak's higher and that then sets the baseline for what you perceive as stimulating right so if you're playing playstation all the time then going and doing the dishes isn't necessarily going to be appealing to you and like in my situation i wanted to make youtube videos do my crypto trades work out a plan for my freelancing but i didn't have the dopamine to do it so i just sat on the sofa eating food and watching netflix as soon as i removed that the afterglow comes i was just awake right like i feel like a fog had lifted and my dopamine levels had reset so now doing things like recording a youtube video or doing the washing up it seemed more appealing because it's no longer at 20 percent of my baseline it's like it, it, it's like over my baseline so it feels stimulating and you you get an afterglow so after a while the dopamine level settled down and in you just get used to your new reality the afterglow sort of wears off a bit and all of the problems that you were running from before and trying to bury them down with the bad habits you were engaging with they come back up and you have to try and face them and it's hard because you might not know exactly what they are like i know i sure don't i'm still trying to get to the bottom of it myself um <clears throat> But when you don't know how to process all of these emotions and thoughts, and you might not even know what they are, they might just manifest as feelings or like depression or anxiety or whatever, self doubt, etc. It's all the same thing. It's your like, it's your, it's the things you buried in your subconscious just like manifesting themselves at the front of your mind. So. What do you do when you can't process it? You more than likely go back to your old habit that you originally formed to try and bury those demons. But this time, it's different. And this time, it doesn't quite cut it because you've had a little taste of the afterglow. You know what life can be like without it. And when you 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 go back into that bad habit with the aim of pushing down the demons you realize you're just extending out of the cycle um and you can't quite push them all the way back down this time and that's when you start stepping into the paradigm shift of knowing that <clears throat> the solution to your problem isn't the external things that you're doing whether it's a substance or an activity it's the same chemistry in your brain you realize that's not going to give you quite what you want and um, that's when the paradigm shift happens and you step into a new version of yourself where it's no longer i'm trying not to eat junk food like part of your identity is 
I eat, I'm a healthy person. It's like I am, right? It was part of your identity and it's not just an external thing you're doing. Um, which is great, like, and sometimes you have to go through this process quite a few times until it fully sinks in and you embody it as an identity. Um, but then, like, of course, what happens? A new pain reveals itself. And you just repeat and um, repeat the process. And I've been through this process many times over the last few years. And um, I'm still refining it, but I thought I'd um, share it with you. So to conclude what we've spoken about here today, um, I just want to say, I know sometimes it might feel like you're taking two steps forward and one step backwards. And um, that's just the nature of self-improvement. The reality is, much of what we do each day is simply a distraction to stop us from having to face our true selves. And um, as soon as we get a glimpse into the chaos under the hood, then um, it's easy to try and shove it back down by drinking a couple of pints or binge watching some Netflix. But as you've made it this far through to the video, it seems like you've got some intention to process through all of that. And um, I'd just like to finish off by saying that I truly believe we can reach our deepest sense of fulfillment when we connect deeply to our truest self. And we can only do that by pushing through all of the pain initially until that vision can pull us the rest of the way.